Hi guys, School here. Microsoft just made a surprise announcement on the future of Microsoft Flight Simulator. To say the announcement raised questions and divided community sentiment is an understatement. Social media platforms have lit up, much as they did back in 2020 when Microsoft announced a return to Flight Simulator market. So what is all the fuss about? The first clue came from the title of the video, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 announced trailer 4K. Microsoft has never referred to the flight simulator as Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, only ever as Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the addition of the 2024 moniker came as a big surprise. This is further backed up in a follow on FAQ post, which came hours after the announcements and which we'll take a look at shortly. But let's begin by walking through the trailer and looking for clues of what is to come. So the video begins with a distant shot of a forest fire, closely followed by water being dropped on the fire by what looks like a Canada CL-415 or a Bombardier 415, aircraft specifically designed for aerial firefighting, which means aerial firefighting missions are going to be a thing. Next, the scene changes to a mountain rescue of a person being hoisted up into what looks like an Airbus H125, very capable search and rescue helicopter. That means search and rescue missions are also now going to be a thing. Then we move to an offshore oil platform flying over what looks like a pretty authentic looking sea. Look at that, that's crazy. The waves look pretty good. Also look at the detail on the oil platform itself. Like, it's pretty incredible detail. On the top of the platform, there's a landing pad, another Airbus H125. Again, very capable lifting transport helicopter. Only this time, it's being used to haul cargo, which is cool. So now this thing is flying over, hauling cargo to a container vessel out at the sea, which means helicopter cargo transport missions are now also going to be a thing. In the next scene, we're at an airport, and what looks like a Cessna 208B Grand Caravan is being loaded with a patient from an ambulance. So air ambulance missions are now going to be a thing. And then something unexpected. Crop dusting. An air tractor AT502B, and the pilot appears to be spraying crops on a field. Agricultural aviation missions are going to be a thing. Then we're up in the mountains for some mountain rescue in the H125 again. Pretty cool stuff. And then, something I didn't expect, skydiving. Wait, what? Skydiving? So, the biggest question I have about all of this, are we the pilot or are we the people skydiving and doing some formation stuff? Like this shot here, we appear to be the pilot doing a nosedive, flying past those people and joining a bit of skydiving. But I'm curious, like surely, surely we'll be able to jump out the plane and go skydiving. I don't just want to be the pilot in this situation. I actually want to jump out the plane. Then we get onto some things that I really am excited about. I believe that this is a Sikorsky S64 Skycrane, now called the Ericsson S64E Aircrane. But this thing is a highly specialized lifting helicopter. And you can see here, it's being used for aerial construction. And my big question is, please tell me we can do more than aerial construction. Like this is proper Thunderbirds helicopter right here. And I really hope that they put more construction missions into the game other than just aerial construction. But that is way cool. But then perhaps not as cool as this. I didn't see this coming. This is the A300 600 ST or its formal name Beluga. This is, well, you know what this is. This is the Airbus that is built to carry Airbus parts around the various factories in Europe. I can't believe they are putting this into Microsoft Flight Simulator. What an absolute hoot that will be, flying a Beluga with an Xbox controller. And then one of my favorite aircraft, the Airbus A400M. I've had the pleasure of standing inside one of these. I've seen it fly at various air shows. It's an immensely capable four engine turboprop. I never thought I'd fly it in Microsoft Flight Sim. I thought I might see this in DCS one day, but it looks like I'll be flying it in Microsoft Flight Simulator in what looks like remote cargo operations in the Arctic. Wait, 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 wait. Arctic? Is that snow? Is that? That's literally snow, isn't it? A400M. Then we get to see some VIP charter service missions. I mean, 
I had a little chuckle when I saw this. So you've got this VIP car. You've got these VIPs getting out. You're stood here. You know, you perhaps should be actually in the plane doing some pre-fight checks, but never mind. You're watching the VIP. I, I, I have so many questions. Are these going to be real VIPs? Are they going to like model Brad Pitt and put them in the game? Are they going to climb on board the plane? Are they going to be sat in the passenger seat when we're flying around? Are they going to talk to us? Are they going to like even respond about how smooth our flying is? Who knows? VIP charters. Then we move on to air racing. It's not Red Bull air racing. It's just air racing. But anyway, I mean, it should be pretty wild. Look at it. Obviously, we're going to have some time runs and things like that, but that's going to be a hoot. And then we move on to gliders. Now, again, I have lots of questions about this. Are they going to implement thermals? Are they going to do it pretty well? Are we going to actually be able to experience being a glider pilot and trying to stay up in the air for hours at a time? Are we going to get rope launches? Are we going to be able to be pulled by an aircraft and launch that way? Like, are our friends going to be able to do this? Either way, gliders. Wait, tornadoes? Tornadoes? Scientific research? Whoa, hang on a second. Are they, does this mean they're going to put tornadoes and hurricanes in the sim? Are, are they going to form freely? Are they going to follow live weather? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Quadcopters? <laughs> oh, God. Experimental aircraft. That looks hilarious. A-10s. Hang on a minute. So I fly A-10s at DCS. You could do formation flying. Is this what this is? It says low altitude training. Does that mean no guns, no missiles? They've always said no guns, no missiles in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Is this a change or they're just sticking military aircraft in, but you can't actually fire anything. You can just do low altitude training. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Then we've got some executive transport in a Cirrus Jet SF-50. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the phone. Let's just watch that back in slow motion. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, seasons, wait, hold, what? Seasons? They snuck that in, didn't they? The video finally closes out with scenes of an airship tour you can take through the Alps, hot air balloon trips through Africa with herds of wildebeest at your feet. All of this coming in 2024. When this announcement trailer played out at the Xbox Games 2023 showcase, community sentiment was definitely divided. Whilst we're all pretty excited by what we've seen and the contents of this trailer, what does this mean for the future of the current Microsoft Flight Simulator? Well, this new trailer definitely shed some doubt that the company would continue their long-standing pledge to provide 10 years worth of support for the current game, something they said back in 2019. The Microsoft Flight Simulator team has since answered some of these questions in an FAQ post, so let's take a look at that. So unsurprisingly, Microsoft was monitoring the social media channels and Reddit and all the tweets it was getting, and then basically dropped in this FAQ. So it basically says that we're excited to share the information, etc, etc. We'd like to take this opportunity to address some of the most common questions we've seen. First of all, will Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 be completely standalone sequel or will it be offered as a paid update for existing players? Microsoft Flight Sim is a standalone simulator and the next generation sequel to Microsoft Flight Simulator that launched in 2020. Notice they don't call it Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. They refer to it as such in a bracket, but they never originally called it that. They only called it Microsoft Flight Simulator. Current aircraft and airports are in Microsoft Flight Simulator, brackets 2020, as well as all virtual sorry, as well as virtually all marketplace add-ons will be supported in 2024. So anything that's in the marketplace will at least be supported in the new version. What kind of support can Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 players expect to see once 24 releases? We'll continue to deliver our Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 roadmap, which has content ranging from aircraft and avionics updates, some updates, city and world updates, as well as the Freen June DLC. We'll take a look at that in a second. We'll continue to support Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 post the Microsoft Flight Simulator 24 launch. However, it doesn't say for how long. Will all purchases users have made from the marketplace be transferable to the new simulator? With very few exceptions, virtually all add-ons that work in Flight Simulator 2020 today will continue to function in 2024. That's good news. Add-ons that were purchased from the in-simulator marketplace 
will not need to be repurchased in Microsoft 24. That is great news. So if you bought anything in the marketplace, it will, you just get, it will all work and you'll get a free migration path. But what about third-party stuff? In fact, the current development roadmap for Microsoft Flight Simulator brackets 2020 only goes up to, well, July, and that's next month. The new roadmap should come out soon, but that will then show you content for July to October. And one of the things that is coming out in October is, of course, the new June film. And to celebrate that, they appear to be launching a June DLC into Microsoft Flight Simulator, which will allow you to fly this ornithopter straight into Heathrow on VATSIM, if you want to. So this all leaves many unanswered questions. Why has Microsoft done this? Why don't they just evolve the current platform? Are the reasons technical or financial or perhaps both? To me, this looks like a bunch of new aircraft and a slew of new missions to give players more reasons to fly and things to do in the sim, all of which is welcome. But could this not just have come out as a DLC, or is there more to it? How long would the current Microsoft Flight Simulator be supported after 2024 releases? Will it go into the 10-year term as promised back in 2019, or just long enough until most people have moved to 2024? What does the upgrade path look like? How much will it cost? What does this mean for my third-party add-ons? Are we going to have to pay to upgrade those too? Sceneries such as Orbex airports or aircraft from Phoenix, PMDG and many others, do we have to pay for those to work on 24? What will the hardware support look like? Will we need new hardware drivers for 2024? Will our current hardware profiles and customizations carry over to the new sim automatically or is there an easy way of doing so? And does this now set the precedent for a Microsoft flight simulator where we'll see a major release every four or five years, much like we do with P3D and X-Plane. There's no doubt that the future of flight simulation is as bright as it's ever been. Sadly, it's beginning to look as expensive as it's always been. What do you think about this announcement? Leave your comments below. Take care, guys, and happy flying.